What the fuck? <laughs> is going on? Horus is hijacking this channel, bitch. Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Lancer. Today's episode is going to be hosted by me, Devil Cat 9 our ship and HP, Pyramon, and my co-pilot and co-host, Jenga Smile, who I think is probably dead. Blah, whatever. Pyramon, project. In today's episode, we will show you the first and finest of rock creations, Goblin. In Germanic and British folklore, Goblin is a small grotesque fairy that usually known for being complete asshole. There's nearly no redeeming quality about the goblins. They steal your shit, hide your shit, kidnap your shit and generally being annoying little shit. As such, Goblin is, like majority of our members, born to fuck your shit up. Onto its stat, Goblin is sadly very fragile with that low health but too bad you can't hit it with that high evasion and e-defense. It can also run very fast while being very small but it has a bad heat cap. However, that didn't matter much as it has an excellent 20 sensor range with great tech attack bonus and safe target, making it the best mech on the field to screw with your opponents. As for its traits, it has three of them. The first, Liturgic Code, give Goblin A plus one accuracy on tech attacks as if it can't hit people hard enough with it already. The second, Reactive Code, allows Goblin to perform a quick tech action as a reaction on anyone that dared and succeeded in tech attack against Goblin once per round. These sounds really good for Goblin but unfortunately it is also fragile, which gives Goblin A plus one difficulty in hull checks and saves. Simply put, Goblin cannot take hit in my raw, you do not want to be grappled by anyone, especially a blackbeard. The shit I have seen will forever be stuck in my mind. Anyway, as a very specialist hacking mech, Goblin only has one weapon mount, a flex mount, but it also has eight system mounts that allows you to customize the heck out of it. As for its core power, Goblin can perform symbiosis. Upon activation, you shrink yourself down and attach yourself to nearby ally. Essentially, you have become nothing more than a system for your ally and you will share their space and move with them. However, you are still big enough that you can get shot out and be targeted as normal, but it's gonna be hard as you benefit from hard cover in this form. While attached, your host can use Goblin's system score, e-defense and tech attack score instead of its own if yours is better. On top of that, starting with next round, Goblin no longer has its own turn. Instead, you get to perform your action on your host turn as you are now two in one. While you cannot overcharge or move in this form, you can still take reaction and free action. As your host's turn is now your turn, this also applies to all start or end of turn effects. Unfortunately, if your host suffers any conditions or heat, the goblin will suffer too. And if you or your host get stunned, symbiosis immediately ends. You can also end symbiosis on your own with a quick action or until the end of the scene. However, just remember that once you end symbiosis, you cannot start your turn this round again until the next round starts. Essentially, symbiosis is really good if you want to support one of your ally but only one of them. Just make sure they were good enough to keep you alive too. Onto the rest of the Goblin license, you get her OS system upgrade 1 and autopod in the first section. Her OS system upgrade 1 is an invasion upgrade that gives you more invasion options. First, Puppet System, forces your target to move wherever you want, even towards dangerous terrain as fast as their speed could carry them. However, they still have to obey difficult terrain and other movement rules that I can't be arsed to mention. But, while your target moves involuntarily, they can still start reactions and engagement. Second, Eject Power Core, causes your target to be jammed until the end of their turn, as they crap out their Power Core, damaging everyone around them for 2 damage. This invasion option can only affect the same target once per round. Autopod is an automatic, homing weapon that can't just be fired on its own. For once per round, when a lock-on is being consumed by either you or anyone else, you can fire the autopod as a reaction to automatically hit the locked-on character. In the second section, aside from the goblin frame itself, you get Horus Meta Hook in her OS system upgrade too. The Meta Hook is a simple but useful quick tech upgrade. Basically, you now can use Investiture to link with an allied character within your sensor range. This allows you to use your ally's sensor range and line of sight as a part of yours. Your target could also use your system score for system checks and saves. Unfortunately, 
Any condition inflicted on you or your target will affect both of you. This also applies to heat inflicted by tech attacks. Also, you can only link with one ally at a time and this effect ends if your target moves out of your sensor range. Her OS System Upgrade 2 is another quick tech upgrade that gives you two quick tech options. The first, Construct Idolin, allows you to make a massive data construct that doesn't really exist but causes enemy systems to believe it does anyway. It can be used as hardcover by allies, is immune to all damage and obstructs movement for all characters. Any nearby character can spend a full action and pass a systems check to realize that this thing doesn't fucking exist, just like your way Eiffel. The second, Construct False Idol. Let you choose you or your allies within your sensor range and make a decoy dummy of your target or any free space in your sensor range. Any target that wants to attack or conduct hostile actions against your target and can see the decoy at the same time have to pass a systems save or else they will attack the decoy instead, thinking it's the real one until the end of their turn. If the decoy takes any heat or is reduced to zero health, it dissipates. Both of these options can last until the end of the scene or until you retake the action. In the final section, you get her OS System Upgrade 3 and Osiris Class NHP. Her OS System Upgrade 3 is another invasion upgrade that comes with two additional options. Dimensional Emblem lets you create three data constructs around your target that cannot be placed beside each other. If any character passed through the constructs, they immediately take two heat and destroy the construct. These constructs can also be destroyed by anyone with a quick action and a successful system check, or by you with a free action. Celestial Paradigm Shift instead let you box your target in a cube. If your target fully moves out of the box, they immediately take two heat and has a 50% chance of getting teleported back into the box or as close as possible. The cube then disappears, no matter if they get teleported or not. Both of these options can last until the end of the scene or until you retake the action. And finally, Osiris Class NHP. Osiris Chan here will give you a new quick tack option that let you hurl your targets into the duo. Depending on the order of when you hit your enemies, hurl into the duo has different effects. When you hit your target, they will take two heat, and if they are the first enemy you hit with hurl into the duo, they take the first gate effect. The next enemy you hit takes second gate effect and so on. After fourth gate is inflicted, next hit goes back to first gate. Also, the progress on gates can last through scenes, but it reset when you take a rest or full repair. The gates have the following effect. First gate let you control your target movement, but only move, not boost or any other movement actions. Second gate slows and impairs your target until the end of their next turn. Third gate stuns your target until the end of their next turn. Fourth switches the target to your side until the end of their next turn. The target is now effectively your slave for a turn, and if your allies ever attack it in any way possible, the effect ends immediately. As a conclusion, Goblin is what you would pick if you want maximum trolling. Support troll? Screw that, just make your enemies stupid mad and look really silly when a mech barely the size of a man troll the hell out of them. Oh heck, you are right, you have just missed the whole thing. Oh fuck, it has reached the tape.